one of the students really wanted to understand that what made me choose US CPA even when I was already a qualified chartered accountant. It really gave me an idea that should I not make a video for all of you to really tell you in terms of you know what the US CPA is all about and what has made me choose this as a qualification. So I thought let me just go in over there and have one video for yourself. For those who are seeing me for the first time, let me introduce myself. My name is Pankaj Tingra and I'm a proud Fintrammer and of course a US CPA by qualification along with Indian Chartered Accountant. To the folks who really want to understand what US CPA is all about, to say it in the most luminous language, US CPA is the Chartered Accountant of US. Like we have Chartered Accountants in India, in US the Chartered Accountants are named US CPA, US Certified public accountant. Basically, if you really go more broadly, more globally, chartered accountant is, is something which is very much common in the Indian context. All over the world, it is CPA as a qualification or a designation that is being used across the globe, whether it is CPA Canada, whether it is CPA US, whether it is CPA Australia and so on and so forth. However, however, CPA, when we really say it in the context of global qualification, it is always US CPA. And that is what we'll be talking today, my friend, all about US CPA. And that's what I did post my chartered accountancy. So that by now we know in terms of, you know, what the US CPA is all about in terms of what that is. Now coming on to, sir, what is the eligibility for pursuing or doing US CPA. Now that is the most common question that I get and I'm sure you know that must be getting on to your mind in terms of you know what is the qualifications eligibility all about so that if I really want to go there I should know that can I be eligible for it or not. Generally speaking US CPA effectively wants you to have 120 credits. Now what is this credit is all about? You know I'm not I'm not used to these credit words, sir. Uh, I really need to understand what this credit credit system is all about. So just to give you the context, one year of graduation gives you 30 credits. So if you have done your BCom, by all means, you would have 90 credits, which is like 30 credits into three years would give you 90 credits. US CPA calls out for 120 credits because in US, the graduation is of four years. So effectively you have 16 years of education that gives you 120 credits, which effectively is the need of doing a CPA qualification. So sir, does that mean that if we are only, only BCom, we would not be qualified for pursuing the, the CPA course? Nopes, nopes, sir, why are you saying no? You just said that it is 120 credits that are needed and Indian, Indian BCom guy would have 90 credits. So what does that mean? Indian BCom would have 90 credits, but the AICPA, which is the American Institute of Certified Public Accountant, the body that is regulating CPA, like we have ICAI over here, that effectively wants you to have 120 credits. But if you have done your BCom, your graduation from some specified institutions, which is like NAC A plus institutions, they gives you, gives you the flexibility of starting CPA right away. So you become eligible for that. We'll talk more on that and of course, if you have questions also on this, you can really write us, you know, we'll be happy to, you know, pick it up and of course, resolve your concerns and queries in relation to that. But what is important is that a BCom student can also be eligible for CPA qualification. Of course, if he has done BCom from some particular institutions and we can really talk on that in a, in a while. But what is important is that you should know that 120 credits are needed. Indian system gives you 90 credits in your graduation. So anything over and above your graduation, if you have done, let's say you have done the MCOM, then it effectively makes you eligible. Let's say you have done your CAIPCC, not even final CAIPCC, that effectively makes you eligible for that because you effectively get those 120 credits if you have done the BCOM and of course CAIPCC. And if you are a qualified chartered accountant like what I was at that point in time, then also you are qualified for it. This is what the overall eligibility is all about, but there are various nuances that really play on in this eligibility framework because many of you may have different kind of qualifications. So if you have any doubts, any concerns, any query in, in this regard, do reach out to us and we'll be happy to you know, resolve it. Coming on to, you know, of course, we have done the CPA, you know, in terms of you know what the CPA qualification is all about. We have done in terms of you know what the eligibility criteria would be. Now coming on to what all are the subjects in CPA, sir? 
सर आई हैव डन बी कॉम सर सर आई डन आई पी सी सी सर सर आई मे क्वालिफाइड चार्ट अकाउंटेंट सर देर कैन बी वेरियस ऑफकोर्स यू नो क्वालिफिकेशन दैट यू मेक कम अलॉन्ग विद बट सी पी ए ओनली वॉन्ट्स यू टू क्लियर फोर एग्जाम्स कम वॉट मे फ्रॉम विच एवर बैकग्राउंड यूर कमिंग अप इट ओनली वॉन्ट्स यू टू क्लियर दी फोर एग्जाम्स देर आर फोर एग्जाम इन एग्जाम्स इन सी पी ए वन इज बिजनेस इन्वायरमेंट एंड कॉन्सेप्ट विच इज नथिंग बट a combination of economics costing and some what financial management along with some bit of it into it just to give you the color in terms of you know what this really looks like now if you really switch on the gears and move on to the far which is the second subject the financial accounting and reporting that effectively deals with the financial accounting and reporting concepts nothing but the us gap in terms of what is needed to prepare the set of financial statements and so on and so forth like you have financial accounting over here over there also you have the financial accounting and reporting the only thing is they would particularly want you to understand the us gap that's the second subject of of cpa we have bc on you know as the first subject financial accounting and reporting as the second subject then we have the audit and attestation the audit is a subject the you know audit that is again something which is very much familiar to you because you have already done audit in some way or the other audit is the third subject that you really need to take on in the cpa curriculum now of course when you are doing the auditing standards you have to have to learn what the us auditing standards are all about and that's what you have to understand and display and demonstrate in the exam and last but not the least is the regulation the taxation my friend the taxation exam the regulation exam of cpa wherein you will be learning what all are the taxation provisions within the us as a geography what all you need to know from the standpoint of individual taxation the corporate taxation what kind of structures they have and so on and so forth is something that we learn in the regulation now these are the four subjects my friend that you really need to do in order to qualify as a cpa is that is that clear yes sir many of you may have confusions or may need more understanding in relation to these four subjects not to worry man just reach out to us fintram is always always there to help you you can comment down over here in this video also we will take it up like coming on to you know what kind of exam pattern uh, is there in usc and that's again something which is very much relevant many of the students really want to understand that you know what is the exam pattern we need to be prepared with when we are hitting the exam in the best possible way now if i really have to give you a you know a broader idea to it and of course we can discuss that and we'll certainly have various videos in this as we go forward you can you know certainly subscribe to our channel fintram global and we'll keep getting those videos but what is important is that you should know that the exam of us cpa is a computer based exam you have to go and sit on the computer and of course start answering that there is a major portion in this exam that is mcq based so of course different subjects would have different uh, percentage or proportionate of of mcqs being given over there but there is a uh, larger uh, share of 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 your exam that is in the mcq form wherein there are four choices being given and you have to click the right one and of course that is the answer the rest of the portion is is more of a simulation based kind of a framework wherein you have to understand a case and you have to write things basis Uh, your understanding of that case and of course the questions that are being asked on that case it is more of a descriptive one wherein you have to understand and write it it's more like a subjective thing that you really have to deal in over there but all in all the exam is very practical exam it is not a theoretical one you really have to understand the nuance and understand what is happening and then you have to answer that there and then what you would be doing as a cpa when you would get into any particular organization is that clear yes sir now we have done what the cpa is all about we have done the eligibility of cpa in terms of you know what the eligibility is all about we have done the subjects that are there in cpa sir we have also done sir the pattern of the exams of the cpa sir and of course you have understood sir what uh, would make me eligible in terms of giving the cpa exam sir we are really really clear sir but we are still not clear sir sir why did you choose your cpa for yourself when you were already a chartered accountant now this something you know my friend you you have to you know maybe go back in the history where i started so i did my chartered accountancy in long back 20 years back right and that point in time um, even a qualified chartered accountant uh, was not getting a kind of a job that i was aspiring that point in time not that i didn't you know, i didn't got a job but of course you know the kind of job that i was looking at you know going into mnc 
working in and of course thrashing in over there and of course the growth path that I was thinking of you know I was not somewhat somewhere confident that I can really uh, land up where I really you know wanted to at that point in time maybe I was wrong but I had that in my mind that I have to get something in addition to my chartered accountancy in order to reach where I reached and of course after you know you do all your research and everything one of the qualification that I choose was US CPA because this was a qualification that had a global recognition and with the advent of many US companies really getting on into India because most of the US companies now either have their back offices in India or they have their outsourced partner being sitting out in India or they have their global finance shared services offices now sitting out in India or you may want to call it global business services now sitting out in India there are many uh, names being given to these offices the extended arms of these US organizations now sitting out here in India and what they really need is that the, the finance folks that they're hiring, they're able to understand the US environment, they're able to understand the US cap, they're able to understand the gas and so on and so forth and that's what the CPA curriculum is all about. It really makes you equipped, equipped in terms of handling and dealing with all those areas and that was one of the biggest reason I thought that if I really have to be future relevant because you know you being relevant not only from the current current time standpoint you have to be relevant from the futuristic stands you know time standpoint you really have to think through in terms of you know what the future will unfold for you and you have to start preparing right now at this point in time and that's what I did because long back you know when I qualified and I was hitting the industry all of these companies or corporates were really entering the Indian market somehow somewhat uh, with some someone's advice or you know my research I finally decided that this is the qualification that, that I really want to have on table for me because if I will pursue this maybe I'll be more future relevant I would be able to get into any future uh, companies that will enter in India the global MNCs that will enter in India and so on and so forth and finally I choose this I did this I qualified this in one go and of course rest is history I was handling the US GAAP consolidation for Wipro at one point in time. I moved as head, you know, as head of finance for BlackRock, again a US MNC. I'm sure you know those who are in the financial domain they will understand. BlackRock is the largest financial financial services firm in the world. You know, I headed the finance because I of course had the qualification that is needed. Then of course I moved on to head the finance for PCG. Again a US organization. The reason I'm telling you my friend about this is because when this question came to me that said why did you choose your your CPA that effectively made me somewhat feel that you know yes there is a need to share this with this with the student fraternity at large because they should also know that there is a path which they can really follow now I did that post my CA qualification but even if you're not CA you're a CVA IPCC student and of course struggling somewhat to clear your chartered accountancy or you're, you're a BCom and struggling to really get into the limelight and of course into the competition you know which you're really facing in your office this is the qualification for you you can really grab it by you know by just attempting and of course clearing the four exams and if you can do that you would really change your pedigree really change your fortune for your Cisco in terms of you know what you're currently having in your organization that's what I changed because in Wipro also when I was a chartered accountant there was a huge huge team of chartered accountants but when I did my CPA, I was differentiated even in that team because yes, you have a dual qualification and of course your qualification is very much needed in the context of global, global finance. And that's what is needed. So if you are a BCom, if you are a BCom or you know, an, an IPCC student, if you're an MCom, if you're a CA final student, and really thinking about changing the gears and shifting the gears for yourself and achieving what you can and what you could achieve, CPA is one of the one of the golden path that you can pursue and I'm not saying just for the heck sake of sharing this but I'm saying because this effectively helped me to reach where I reached to know more my friend Fintram Global of course is into US CPA day in and day out we can certainly help you right from your evaluation to your studies to your exams and of course to you getting a good job also because the kind of job assistance that we would have for you is gonna be gonna be game-changing for yourself 
In order to know more, you can reach out to FinTram Global. I'm providing all the details below. And of course, you can reach out to me also. Just, just comment in the box below. I'll be happy to pick it up. And together, we would ace USCP exam. Together, we would ace it. Thank you.